My name is Dan Bile. I am going to talk about why cook and post types are awesome. It's a little shorter of sessions than I'm used to, or used to, so this is also going to be a crash course on cook and post types. And our third headline is scalability and why it is important. Um, somebody might get that joke. Um, who am I? I'm Dan Bile. Um, that's me. I thought I did. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Awesome. Um, like many WordPress devs, I have a BS in applied sociology. <laughs> um, I thought about teaching, I did about half my masters, and then I decided I wanted to make websites. Um, I'm front end WordPress developer, as I said, I'm currently working with Blue Earth Interactive out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Before that, I was freelancing for about four years. Um, and that's the short and skinny of who I am, I suppose. Uh, what to take away from this? Let me ask, how many people are actually like developers, developers, that's all they do, and they do it well? You know, well, you can leave your hands off. <laughs> I don't do it well either. Uh, how about designers? Awesome. How, how many of you de designers also code? All of them. Holy cow. Um, and end users, maybe you own your own business or nonprofit, you run your own site, things like that. Okay, awesome. This is what I think you guys can take away from this, even if you don't know any code, because we are going to be looking at code. If that scares you, I'm sorry. Uh, end users and clients, you're going to end up getting to know some terminology about what exactly a custom post type is, its capabilities, possibly some of its limitations. Designers, you're going to get the exact same thing, except you can now talk with your developer. Um, and you can talk on, uh, on the same plane, because that's how we talk. Um, developers, if you're not familiar with custom post types, you're going to get free code if you want to get it off uh, GitHub. Uh, in there we have Steam examples and possibly new ideas to increase your own personal income. Um, you have to come up with your own ideas, but I hope they make you money. One second. Check. Check. <laughs> um, all right. To start off with, over the past, wow, that's really sensitive. Hello? Yes. Okay. Um, over the past four to five years, I've worked on sites ranging from $500 to six figures plus. And the one thing that they all had in common is that in one way, shape, or form, they had at least one custom post type. So what that proves is that this is not... Core WordPress allows us to do this, but almost every site utilizes it. A couple of major plugins that you might be familiar with that use custom post types is Meteor Slides, the Events Calendar, WooCommerce, uh, and what this proves is that a custom post type can do everything from a simple slider to e-com to events, which are a lot more difficult than you may imagine. Um, I thought I had another bullet there, but apparently I don't. Sorry. Um, so why custom post types? Scalability is important in the fact that as developers, or as a developer, I want to do something that I can give a client, and maybe a year or two from now, someone else can go and work on it, and they're going to know what it is and how to do it. So I've already laid the groundwork. Um, the versatility of a custom post type is that it can really be anything that you need it to be. Popularity and support, this is very important. If you don't know what you're doing, if it's your first time registering a custom post type, go out there, go, go to wordpress.org or just you know Stack Overflow. There's millions of entries about how to do this, how to do it correctly, um, and the pitfalls that you often run into, which I'm going to show you a couple. Um, and probably most importantly are meta boxes. And I'll show you exactly what those are as well. 
And I'll talk about them here as well, I guess, so too. Uh, metal boxes allow you to extend the functionality and organize content of any registered post type. Interestingly enough, this includes pages. Um, if you're just hearing for the first time that a page is a post, do not freak out. Um, Metaboxes, most importantly, do not need to be registered along with their custom post type. Um, this means that we can add Metaboxes to others' work without hacking plugins. Um, I'll give an example of this uh, just by talking about it, about uh, a Metabox that I included on a WooCommerce, um, on the WooCommerce product post type uh, without hacking WooCom Core. Uh, that way, WooCommerce can still be updated for security updates, and my work stays intact. Um, good custom post type is good, customizing metaboxes are even better. Uh, this is the example that I'm going to show. Uh, imagine that you're a small business owner, maybe some of you are, and you have a list of employees that you'd like to show on your, on your site. And you want your employees to have a name, because they are people. We could use the post title for that. Uh, we should give them a description, because they're people and they deserve recognition. Uh, we will use the editor, which for developers, that's simply the content. And we will have meta boxes for my really bad CSS um, for phone. <laughs> you don't want me designing anything. Uh, for phone, email, uh, fax, if people still use that, uh, images, maybe a headshot or something like that, a Twitter handle, whatever you want it to be. Um, all right, screw these slides. Let's get to some code. I do enjoy interactive discussions, so if you have a question at any point, raise your hand if I'm looking down, yell at me, that is okay. Um, what we have here is basically a stock 2013 install with unit testing data in it, as well as the, got some products around here somewhere. Well, we have some Wukong uh, information in here as well. We're not really overly worried about the content at this point because we don't have any. And so the first thing that we want to do for our list of employees is say, well, we need a place to put these employees. And what we could do is we could create a new page. We could call it, employee, I'm going to call it Employees 2 because I already have a page called Employees. And we could have Frank, and Sue, and Tom, and they could have a description. And we could even give them That's not a good image. How about that one? And we could even give them an image. What? No, I screwed up my template. There we go. So this is something that I often see um, from very small businesses that are running their own sites, where they try to throw everything into the content area. And what we've seen here is that, well, Frank and Sue, they don't have descriptions. Neither, neither do they have a picture. And so the layout of this is just horrible on the front end. It makes no sense. So what we want to do is we want to register a custom post type. And I'm going to show you how easy that is with as little hiccups as possible. Uh, this is my preferred way of doing things when it comes to the functions file, is to break out everything that is custom to my work somewhere else. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, this is the stock 2013 functions file. The first thing I'm going to do is include um, my functions. Luckily enough, 2013 has an ink directory already. And here we will see the code that I'm going to type really, really fast, i.e. uncomment it. As well as show you uh, the first mistake that many people make when registering their first custom post type, 
Now, uh, was anybody in the UI UX uh, pre or presentation yesterday? A couple of people? No? Um, one thing that they mentioned real quick was a callback. And what we're seeing here, I have a laser, is we're doing an action. That action is happening on in it. I'm not going to go in super in depth here. Um, and then this is a callback. And what this callback does is it's going to register a function which we're going to define two lines later, right here. And what that function is actually doing is giving our custom post type the labels that we want it to have. Which this looks like a lot of code, but we'll breeze through it. So basically what we're doing, and actually all of this is not even, that's backwards. Um, a lot of these are actually not even required uh, by WordPress in and of itself. Um, what we're doing is we're setting labels. And so a nice name for this is going to be example custom post type. A singular, singular name, example custom post type, on and on and on and on and on. As we start to go down, we'll see that the labels for our actual post type are just being directed in as a variable right there. And then a number of default settings in this case. Um, I'm using Sublime Text 3, which has a number of packages you can pull in, uh, which is where this code comes from. <coughs> uh, but most importantly, one of the things that you want to look at is capability type and support. Capability type you can actually set to page. In four years, I've never found a reason to do that. I've always used post. Um, supports uh, shows the default functionality of a post in WordPress itself. There's a lot more options than this, which I've already stripped out, but I'll show you um, how you can manipulate these a little bit. So if all goes well, I can save my functions file, refresh my page, and I have a magical new tab here called Example Custom Post Type. In this Example Custom Post Type, we have a sample. We have a title. We have a contact area. Content area. Excuse me. <coughs> Um, revisions, the author box, and the featured image. All of which is default actions. Now we don't really need all of this for our employees. You know what, we don't really need to track who the author of this is. And you know, we probably don't even need to know what revision it is. There, that's looking pretty clean. We have a title, we have a content area, and we have a featured image. I'm feeling pretty good about that so far for our you know, base employee work. Uh, the next step that we want to do is add something more custom. We want to add a phone field, or an email field, or a fax field, or whatever it's going to be. Uh, and that's actually called a meta box. To do that, we use this code. We're going to do another action, and that action is going to be add meta box. It's backwards again. Uh, we're going to add a meta box. We have another callback. That callback is called directly in this function right here. Example meta box. Um, and this line is relatively important. Um, specifically, the one, two, three, fourth argument right here. <laughs> This fourth argument tells it what post type it should be applied to. So you can see that 
the pulse type I'm applying it to, we just defined right up here. This function, or this actually is a callback for our next function, which is actually going to write our meta box, and I'll put that into pull that into view. And so what you're actually might be picking up on is that a lot of what we're doing is we're going to say, hey, we're going to add something, and then there's a callback, and then there's going to be another function, and that's going to do something. Then we're going to have another action, which is going to build upon what, build upon what we just did, as well as add something else below it. Uh, so in this example, we have a standard text field. which now gives you a box that says, example meta box, this is fun, this will work. Uh, one of the reasons that you want to put information in there right away is because you need to know how to save this information. Putting this stuff in here, let's just comment out our save for the time being. I don't know if that broke it. No. So if you're not saving, that's obviously a problem. I mean, it makes no sense to be able to put information in without saving it. Uh, so the information we have so far is we have a custom post type. We have a pretty simple text box right here, as well as Uh, a pretty basic save, save function. Uh, I know I'm not going through a lot of this code. A lot of it can be found on uh, uh, WordPress.org or other examples as well. If you Google something like how to save a meta box, you're going to come up with code that's almost exactly the same to this. Uh, this is some preliminary stuff that you're going to find in almost every single save function. Uh, but this is really where we need to start paying attention. Because we're saying, if our post type is example custom post type, and if we have a input which is named example text, as it is named example text right here, we are then going to update that metadata to that post. <coughs> so with this now uncommented. We have now updated and actually written to the database something brand new that WordPress allows for, but we can now label it in any way we want. I think what I'm going to do at this point is open up the employee custom post type that I already started. Uh, so what I was showing you was you know, the example stuff. Uh, prior to doing this, I went ahead and I made an employee custom post type using the exact same procedures. I gave it uh, an employee title and an employee phone number, still using the description, still using the title as a employee's name. I'm planning on using the featured image uh, as a as a employee image. But what you notice on my employees page is there's nothing there. That is because we need to access this custom post type. This page simply doesn't know that it's supposed to say anything about this post type. So what I did was I took page.php and simply resaved it as template-employees.php 
and added this bit of code. Did you see that? Defend obnoxious. <coughs> this bit of code, which actually stays commented out. WordPress knows that if we have something commented out that says template, night, template name colon, whatever's after that colon, we're going to call that a page template, which is awesome. And in this page template, we run a loop that says if post type is employees, post per page is negative one, and negative one is a little counterintuitive. Post per page being negative one means it will grab all of them. So you could also do something like nine, 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 but that's just a lot of work. So we do negative one. Um, then go back through our standard loop. And what you'll notice is because we now have that, uh, because this is now here, our template name employees for our page, we now have an employees page template, which is pretty awesome. Wow! I'm a small business owner. I have three employees that are Superman, Winnie the Pooh, and Walter White. Um, slightly different genres, um, but you get the idea. Uh, Superman is a superhero. You can contact him at this number, and this is all this information about him. Winnie the Pooh, he eats honey. That's his number. Walter White's an entrepreneur, um, and that's his number, apparently. And so this is, what we're, what we're doing is we're allowing, as a developer, and I need my book because I'm going to quote this thing. An hour and a half ago, I was at Jesse Friedman's, and he said, make experiences where people don't need to think. And that hit me because as a developer, 90% of the time, the user to me is the client. It's the person that's using the site. So, I can go to a small business owner and say, you know what, this is the name of your employee, this is what you want to say about them. Put their title here, put their phone number there. There is almost zero opportunity for error. And it just makes things... Oh, my trackpad's doing that thing. I guess I'll tell a story. Um, has anybody ever had a short code that they tried to put into the content area and that short code needed an ID? Yes. 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 A couple of people. So a short code needs an ID. Well, it's been my experience that it's really, really, really easy to mess up that short code. You know, maybe you use curly brackets. She's not paying attention. Um, maybe you use curly brackets instead of normal brackets, or you open with two brackets, or two, uh, two quotes and you end it with one quote, and all these things that are really common errors uh, just simply on data input. Wouldn't it be so much better if you just had a meta box that you would just put that ID into, and you didn't even have to worry about the short code? Do that all of the time for clients. It takes out the error, and that's in my opinion, the goal. That's the goal of what, what Jesse was talking about when he said, you know, don't, you know, create something where the end user doesn't have to make a decision. They don't have to know if they're doing it right or wrong. They just need to pump a number in there and they're done. It's awesome. Now I need to load up this again. Um, yes. So how is um, adding a meta box different from adding a custom field which you can do to any post, right? So the question, 
was what's the difference between adding a custom field versus a custom meta box? Um, I get that quite often, and it's my opinion that the opportunity for error with custom fields is too great. So in the end, the use uh, template-wise, it's you're going to get basically the same output. Uh, but of course, that custom field has to be labeled the same way every single time, everywhere you're going to use it. Whereas a meta box, you just can't mess it up. It's there. I don't know. The question was, do, uh, do custom fields get stored in a different place than a custom Metabox? Um, Metabox data gets stored with the post and WP post itself. Um, and hopefully we can get to the code to get to that. Um, uh, it was... Maybe, maybe not. I knew I was nervous for this talk. I didn't think it was for this reason. <laughs> um, and I don't have any appropriate jokes to tell, so I'm sorry. Yes? Can I ask uh, what version of the install the custom meta box was started with? Um, the custom post type itself was allowed in 2.7, I believe. Um, so the meta box would have been there or very shortly after. Oh, I'm sorry. It was what the the question was what version was the meta box allowed in or released in? A uh, quick question. Uh, at the point where we saw how the image, oh, the information displayed with the employee types, with the phone number and the description, where is it determined how it's laid out? Is that in the theme or is it just automatically spit out as they come? Or uh, well, where was that? Before my technological error, I was showing the uh, how to make a custom page template. And within that custom page template, I was calling that metadata specifically. Um, and I was actually only calling two things. Um, I was using the post title for the employee name. I was using the content for the content. I was using the post thumbnail for the featured image. And then the two custom were the phone number and the fax or whatever, email, whatever else I put up there. Yeah. This doesn't work. Should I ask if anybody's registered a custom post type before? A couple of people? Awesome. Um, one of the things that I'm probably not have, or who's registered a custom meta box? Same people? Some people? Um, one of the really interesting things that I find is that you can register a custom meta box to the page. Um, and in that situation, I had a demo or an example of why you would do that. Um, I had a layout. Uh, someone came to a company I was working for at the time with a layout that had these two massive sections above the content. And these two sections had to be um, formatted in a certain way. So what we ended up doing was regist registering two custom post types that used the WussyWig editor to do a uh, header, header left and header right content area, which that gave them the ability to uh, add a short code to a meta box. They could format it using the standard WordPress WYSIWYG editor. Um, and as usual, they really couldn't mess it up because that it is what it is. Um, 
Another anecdotal story I can tell is uh, I had a freelance designer come to me who was doing a WooCommerce build. And the company built very, very high-end uh, audio devices, and they were, some of them were actually built in Colorado. The owner of the company needed his site to show a little emblem that said, built in Colorado, on some of, or on the products that were built in Colorado. Of course, not all of them were. What we ended up doing to fix this problem was make a custom WooCommerce page template, uh, and give a give the WooCommerce product custom post type a meta box, which was simply a drop down that said yes or no. Is this product made in Cal or Colorado? Yes or no. If that value was yes, we showed an icon. That's it. And because that code resided within my functions file, they can still update WooCom as much as they want. Because I mean, you don't want to hack an e-commerce plugin. Just a bad idea. Uh, they need to stay up to date for features. They need to stay up to date for security. Uh, they need to stay up to date for make sure they don't blow up. Um, so separating your code out and registering meta boxes to somebody else's custom post type is a great way to get around those problems. I really thought that would have given us enough time. <laughs> Can you assign different permissions to who can like publish and edit custom post, post types than regular posts? Like, could you have, if you had your author's page, could you make it so only admins can edit that? No one's ever asked me that before. Yes. 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 Apparently you can. Um, That's never been a requirement of any job. Yeah, but, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, I'll say it. It's a town hall. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, mean, I know that the Add Minimize plugin, you know, if you want to do it like graphically as opposed to in code, I'm a designer, so that's how I do things. But um, I know the Add Minimize plugin lets you assign permissions to post types separate from posts, separate from pages, separate from all that stuff. So who's allowed to edit what? Add Minimize? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's code ways of doing it too, but that's just the graphic checkbox fun way. Okay. Just real quick to uh, Uh, the question is, were there any plugins to handle this? And the answer is yes. There's a plugin, a very popular plugin called um, Custom Post Type UI. Um, there's another plugin called Advanced Custom Fields. I personally prefer not to use them. I'd explain that, but I'm running out of time. Um, so let's get to our layout question. Holy cow, what did you do to my resolution? That's okay. <laughs> so what you'll notice real quickly is that uh, similarly I, that I included my functions in the themes PHP file. In the theme style sheet, I'm also importing my own style sheet. And that style sheet has that in it. Class half, width 45%. And so if we take a look at the markup of this page, you'll notice I have a custom post type contain right here. I have an align left, half, align left, half, and the content. And that's about it. And the reason I'm using align left is because it's a default WordPress style, or class, I should say, which floats everything to the left. Typically used on images, but you could do that here. So in my page template called employees, I have my custom post type contain, my line left half, which I have the title and the thumbnail in, <coughs> 
And my second align hand, align left half, which uh, I'm using a section here for, and let me uh, stretch this out a little bit. So I'm calling a variable, or I'm setting a variable called title text. Title text equals get post meta, get the ID. And when we're inside a loop, get the ID will call the ID of every single post that, that returns true to being that custom post type. I will get the post meta that is called title text box, and I'll give it an attribute of true because that's required. Down here, I can simply echo that. So my title text box, that is why my title text is echoing right there. Uh, so that's something that you're going to see rather, rather frequently uh, if you have themes using custom post types that are built in or plugins that may require you to alter your, your uh, theme files. It looks like I have about three minutes. Are there any other questions? Um, I apologize for the difficulties we had. Let's go one, two, three. Um, following up on the question that you answered, is there a way to turn off meta boxes for some, like, say your phone number? I want the admin to be able to edit the phone number in the post, but I don't want one of the authors to be able to edit the phone number. Is that possible? I'm getting the adminify yeah, positive head shake. <laughs> the, the function is user can or, or the function the WordPress function is user can, so you make an if statement. And if user can. If user can, and then you manage you options. Look at the codex, right? Yeah. If user can manage options, update setting. Correct. Exit. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Is there a easy way to make a meta box um, contain an image reference for an image in the WordPress's image library? Um, it's certainly doable. I did do that for the pre-3.5 media gallery, but not since. Um, it's certainly doable. I, wouldn't ex I could speak to how easy the new media gallery is to, but it's doable. How hard is it, is it to add regex to the phone number field or anything like that that you want to verify that it really is a phone number? Um, <coughs> I might do that off the top of my head. I might do jQuery verification before it's even saved um, to make sure that it's, you know, 123 dash, 123 dash, 1234 or something. Um, I'd probably use um, verify.js myself to make sure that nothing even gets, that it just doesn't save. So for people who aren't familiar with custom post types like me, having done stuff using categories, is this a, is it, does it almost obfuscate the need for using that feature of WordPress completely? This copy? No. Um, you can register a custom taxonomy to a custom post type, which gives the post type the ability to have categories within itself. Um, the old way prior to custom post types to organizing data or posts in this matter were to uh, simply use default WordPress posts, come up with categories, in this case our category would be employee, uh, and then loop through the post type that has the category of employee. That just gets really, really, really messy once you start dealing with a lot of posts. Um, the, other, the other reason to use a custom post type is that I don't have to tell my client, oh, you know what, go create a post put it in the employee category, maybe put it in like a technician subcategory or something like that. You literally have a tab, a link, in your admin area. Do I log in? I don't know if I log in. I mean, you literally have a, have a, a link right here that says employees. So maybe if you don't update your site that often, maybe you forget how to do things you get back there and you're like, oh, well, this is obviously where I add an employee, or maybe you fired someone. This is where you take them away. Um, so I, I think that one of the great things that custom post types are good at is making everything semantic and easy to understand. And I mean, 
you might not even need the editor field. You can take that away and just list phone numbers and pictures and whatnot. Um, but that's why we don't use the post uh, taxonomy to do to organize data anymore. Yes? I said you don't like the plugins. Why? Why is that? He said that I do not like the plugins that I mentioned. Um, week and a half ago, two weeks, I was updating advanced custom fields from version 2.1.4 to the most current version. Uh, now, advanced custom fields between version 2 and between, or from 2 to 3, made drastic changes on how they saved metadata, which means when you updated, especially from 2, skipping all of 3 to 4, you lost all of your meta fields. Oh. Like, they're just gone. The data is still there, but you have to recreate all of the fields so it knows where to show up. By registering them in your own functions file, you just don't have to worry about it. You know, the, the save meta function is not going anywhere. Probably. Um, I'm guessing they were creating their own tables in the database prior to version 3. But I'm not positive. If you just started with the newest version of it, you'll probably be okay. But I can guarantee you that this will. I'm sorry, we're, I think we're cut. I'll be in happiness. I'll be in the back in the happiness bar in about 10 minutes. Sorry for. <laughs>